you can see is from a holidays industry so another uh, thing we can do is <coughs> excuse me when it's a product based industry types of questions are little bit different and when it's a service based industry like this types of questions will be different so slowly as we proceed we'll be telling you what can be important for example if you are doing uh, f2 so intangible asset if you are talking about so is 38 can be important here because we are more into service industry intangible becomes very important when it is production some other ifrss can be tested okay so before starting they have given context statement stop me any time if you have anything to add all of you okay so context statement basically they have given here the situations okay for example global issues actually this thing happened in covid time because this exams are like world like scenario so a lot of people were assuming that shall we assume covid situation questions will come or should we mention that covid situation is there so the answer to that is no we should not assume covid is going on or war kind of situation because then everything will be different we have to understand it's a normal scenario however sometime if you want to make a reference that's completely fine okay because if you assume there is a lockdown or there is something war or conditions like that obviously a lot of this business will be affected in fact this business is the first to get affected the current industry the tourism industry because it's not a basic need got it so just like the previous industries it includes the introduction so how it started is they'll introduce to your role then they'll give an idea to the holiday industry and slowly slowly they will come to our company okay when we found when we are founded what are the financials uh, we can try to get a sort analysis of that okay what we are doing what our computers are doing what is our structure so basically we are in the middle level so from that point of view what will be important there are certain things like financials and structure sometimes which is same for strategic case study management case study and operational case study however we have to understood that according to the role we are playing now we are the middle level person will be doing the execution on the decisions taken by the board however sometimes we can still recommend them something about the issues all right we have the board structure we have a business model annual report what we are doing and they give one competitors also like they have given here mango sales annual report we'll compare that also and the news report so the most important thing for you now until exam is your pre seat i request you to read it daily once okay you must be thinking why to read daily the reason is <coughs> every time you read firstly in the start it might take certain time 30 to 40 minutes but once you start reading you can finish it in 10 to 15 minutes 10 minutes itself every time you need uh, read you'll get new kind of ideas what is the opportunity for our business what can be the issues happening uh, there are a lot of people skill related questions coming in this so we can understand what about this role what if uh, business ecosystem change okay what our computers plan is there we can even analyze and compare this to real world companies so if you just keep reading this it will be very very helpful even when we'll go through the individual subjects revision overview that time also we can try to apply it we should be kind of learning it not word by word we should you should have an idea if somebody asks you when the company was founded basically all the facts and figures should be by heart to you okay because you are a role playing in this basically you are working as a finance manager middle level at a very good position and imagine you yourself don't know about your company so it can make a, a bad impact okay so let's start happy well holidays we can call it happy well is a quoted travel company that sells package holidays the company operates its own flights and hotels and sells rated third party products such as an insurance and car hire on behalf of third parties so a lot of things they have mentioned again we'll go happy well is a quoted travel company okay 
let's stop and discuss a little bit about what is quoted company quoted company means listing company listed company which are taking money from public right mm -hmm. so let's say if you talk about uk so it is done by fca financial conduct authority or in uk it will be scc security exchange commission so when a company gets quoted they will get lot of advantages however there will be certain disadvantages as well can you name some advantages and disadvantages of being a listed company i mean the customers uh, would prefer more of a listed company i believe why i mean i mean you're correct yeah why means like uh, i would prefer something like uh, listed when when i check for myself and i would it would be easier to check the reviews and uh, and i feel it's more safe to do through the listed um i think one of the advantages um, i believe is that we can raise capital but easily through the um issuance of shares um so that's an advantage of a of a listed company and um i think the risk is um also manageable risk or disadvantages any words you can use i'm sorry what um would you repeat I mean, risk or disadvantage yeah yeah um, i think the disadvantage would be that um they have to follow a lot of laws and regulations as compared to a company which is not listed on a stock exchange um and also another disadvantage would be um there might be issues in terms of ownership and control because everyone who actually owns the shares owns the company right so yes. this yeah so that might be a disadvantage um um yep yeah, i mean those are the ones okay. i can think of at the moment good so first we talk about uh, like cg said uh, we'll trust them yeah so uh, trust is there why because when it's listed when they are taking public money so they have to disclose lot of information they have to follow certain rules and regulation basically there is more scrutiny than the normal business so trust factor is more that's the advantage second <clears throat> like hanan mentioned easy to raise capital being listed now if you want to grow we can grow at a faster pace because access to finance is there in fact one of the primary reason to get listing is to get the finance okay then disadvantages disadvantages can be more scrutiny because they need to have internal audit they need to follow corporate governance they need to have proper risk management they need to comply with lot of rules and regulations and another can be lot of expectation from the stakeholders like nowadays everybody is expecting companies to be environmental friendly socially responsible and uh, as you can see we are owning flights so flights are responsible for a lot of pollution so that way can be a pressure on us yeah benny anything you want to add Benny, are you there? Yeah, yes, Mr. Uh, the uh, the uh, advantage was uh, as our uh, told this is easy to raise finance, and uh, since it is complied by the scrutiny, so the the disadvantage was with the dilution of the ownership or uh, small companies cannot afford this listing, uh, and the the effort will be more. Okay. okay can we can we <clears throat> name some of the famous travel or tourism companies real world companies because that will be important for us to analyze them. because what seema does is whatever issue is happening in that industry they'll try to bring on similar 
Um, so um, I think what I can think of is the um, Expedia company. So it's listed on NASDAQ. Um, so they've got the code X, uh, EXP, right? Uh, and also Booking.com. Uh, so they go under the name Booking Holdings, and they're also listed under NASDAQ. Um, Airbnb as well. It's also listed on NASDAQ. Yeah. And also all of um, and also the airlines as well. Right? Most of the airlines that are listed, they also have their own packages, right? They might not be a travel company; they're an airline company, but they have uh, like travel packages. Um, so they so they can be under the same umbrella as a as a travel company. Right, and uh, these stakeholders, for example, if you want to travel, we can go via hotel that can arrange all the package for you via the I mean, this airline companies or through third parties. So under that umbrella, as you mentioned, any of them can take us and give us the packages. Or some people are just uh, a middleman kind of thing, intermediary. They can also get into the things. So what we can understand straight away in this business is this is a little bit complex. Okay. And secondly, there are a lot of stakeholders need to be managed compared to a normal business. So when we talk about hotels, is a different business altogether compared to operating airlines now we are doing both so it can be very very complex for us and the third part what they mention here is sales third uh, related third party products this is very common nowadays insurance you can see they are uh, selling car hire usually if you go to any website they make us accept the cookies and after that you are bombarded with a lot of advertisement so this also again common this can be a part of extra sources for revenue for us commission and everything <clears throat> okay at the same time we have to be uh, careful how ethical it is and we are doing with the user consent <clears throat> okay so stakeholder management will be very important as we go forward we'll make a list of you know 15 to 20 stakeholders what they want from us and how we are managing them okay I'm not talking about a basic stakeholders. We'll obviously talk about that, like our employees, shareholders, government, universities. Apart from that, here some of the specific stakeholders can be airport management company, because you have to pay for your landing slots. Okay. Then hotels. Maybe most of the hotels we have taken on lease. So all of this becomes very important for us. And also we'll uh, go in detail and find a company which is very similar to this, which is doing flights and hotels both. All right. So Happy Wells administrative base is in Westland. Again, Westland is a fictional country. You can just take it as England mostly or UK because that's what they try to put in most of the case study. <clears throat> the company sells foreign holidays to Westlandian customers who fly from their local airports to the destination served by Happy World. So it looks like we are just a national company so far. We have not go gone into the international market. So this also gives us an opportunity to think of going into the international market. However, going there is more of a strategic level decision. The board of directors, the senior managers are involved in that. Sometimes if we have been asked about our input on that, we can give mostly our job will be if they have taken the decision we have to implement <coughs> who fly from their local airports to the destination served by happy will westland's currency is w dollar as i said there won't be any calculation we, we don't need to worry about if there is a problem with the currency rates or anything you can just think as it equal to us dollar or pound that should be fine Westlandian company law requires companies to prepare their financial statement according with the IFRS. So now most globally are going with the IFRS. Going with the IFRS has a lot of advantages for us. For example, if the company is going for a merger or strategic alliance, when we are valuing the business or when we are comparing the financial statements of two companies. So IFRS to IFRS will be easier. Let's say if one company is using IFRS and another company is using Indian accounting standard or us gap so there should be a difference though it's the same company but if you report in a different standard the numbers will be different so that's also an advantage for us 
<clears throat> so the most important thing here in the introduction is uh, what is our business, which industry it is, are we listed or not, and the primary sources of revenue, which is they have given straight away. We are doing holidays for flights, hotels, and we are also acting as third party and selling different products. Any question? There is another paragraph mm -hmm. left for the introduction. You are a finance manager at Happy Wells head office. Your primary responsibilities are associated with management accounting and you report to Ina Juhas, the senior financial manager who reports directly to the finance director. <clears throat> okay. So we can just uh, stop for a minute here and discuss what is the role of financial manager. According to SEMA, if you see, they think uh, or they put organization as a triangle and that can be subdivided into three sections. So on the top, we have senior finance manager who is working directly with the board. Then we have finance manager sitting in the middle. That's you in this case. Then a person reporting to you is a finance officer. So we are at the center of the organization. So what kind of role a finance manager does? <coughs> Primarily, they have just given you your primary responsibilities are associated with management accounting. Management accounting and obviously little bit of financial accounting as well. Because F2 questions can also come. Your senior manager can have some problem with reporting. So they can ask how to go with it. Is IFRS allowing this or not? Okay. Apart from that, what role a finance manager plays in a normal day to day operations? Um, I think so. We're looking at um, management reporting, right? So we're looking at how. Um, sorry, what's the, what's the name of this business again? Uh, Happy World, right? So Happy how Happy World is doing on a monthly basis, and we can we need to compare on a monthly basis to our budget or forecast, and we also need to look at the KPIs cost analysis and, uh, and other metrics to look at how we're doing, right? Um, so as a manager, this is really important. Um, I think the other bit um, is um, strategic analysis, right? So if you look at how we're doing on a monthly basis, we also need to look at how we will do in the future. So we need to come up with um, uh, strategies to minimize risk and um, basically optimize our numbers. Right. So the primary thing can be, you know, dealing with the number, the specific ratios and other yeah. financial requirements of a business like capital needs, then sources of uh, finance, okay, liquidity management, cash flow management, all of this. And beyond that, they need to also be looking at the future expenses coming in and how things are related to other as aspects of the business. <clears throat> so in, in SEMA case study, you will be tested on five primary skills. That is like first business skill, then you have technical skill, people skill, leadership skill and digital skill. So in technical and business, they might ask this question, but when it comes to leader and people, usually they will put a scenario of a conflict between the managers or there is an issue of change management happening, or we have to make certain redundancies. So that is also one important aspect of us. In fact, E2, E2 will be covering that aspect only. Okay, so that's also a role. So what I will do now, immediately after the class, I will share you the blueprint of MCS by SEMA. In that, they have given in detail the role and responsibilities of financial manager. So please go through it. It will be very big file, but you at least focus on the specific pages. Two, three pages is very important. If you don't want to read, everything is fine. Okay. If you see a lot of questions in the exam are coming from there. I mean, not exact question, but it will give you an idea. It is coming under this heading. It is, let's say they talk about one role is to manage their team, including conflict management. So a question can come up. There is one manager and another manager at same level, there is a horizontal conflict or a senior manager or a manager 
reporting to him that is a vertical conflict like these issues can come okay so let's move forward the package holiday industry so basically now we are just talking about the industry maybe some of the facts are not happening in happy well but we can assume when there is a gap we can assume this is same to happy well if you see we are not studying under happy wells heading we are just having the introduction to the industry but it's safe to assume in most of the cases this is what is the ecosystem of happy well okay we'll also try to get in the material for the actual industry which is mostly similar similar only okay package holidays usually compromise three core elements so firstly what is package holidays and how it is different from other holidays you want to make any guess it's very simple so package holidays um so we just need to basically buy a package right so everything is included in the package um so we don't really need to plan anything right but other normal holidays um outside packages we have to book our own flights we have to book our own hotels we have to we have to plan where we need to go in the holidays um so i think that's the main difference all right so basically there is one company who will organize everything for example if somebody is coming to happy well now it's our responsibility to give them every service from door to door most of the time it can be airport to airport from your city or sometime door to door they'll come to pick you up from your home and until they drop you back to your home and obviously most of the companies or i would say majority of the companies don't do everything of their own so now they'll be tying up with other place and they'll have lot of commissions to deal with other players or sometimes there are certain companies who don't own anything they are selling this package holidays just being a intermediary company okay so same point what we discuss managing relationship becomes a becomes a very very important point here and if you are doing it properly if you are having good relationship we can pass it on to the customer and we can get good deals for them uh, giving uh, good businesses to our partners and ultimately it can help us to also get good profits and obviously though it is package they will have different options also nowadays people want more tailored to their likes and dislikes like this also they can do it <clears throat> okay package holidays usually comprise three core elements that are booked in a single bundle of a total price customers booking package holidays do not know the individual cost of each of the three elements of their holidays so there are certain information that should be confidential and if you do research in the real world also package holidays become more expensive than going directly however the problem is going directly especially into a new countries uh, it's not safe we don't know whereabouts so people try to go with the package holidays so we can just compare okay when you are reading this revising this point just write it down now need to compare the package holidays with the normal holidays normal holidays as in will just provide the flight service the rest they can take care of because there must be certain group of customers who are okay to only get the flights then they will take care of the rest or there are certain people who only needs accommodation because you know being a listed company we will have constant pressure of increasing the profits earning money for the shareholders so we can compare both the upside and downside with package holidays and normal holidays right <clears throat> okay flights customers choose the dates of their departure and return they can choose from a range of destinations served by local airports that have flights matching those dates so there is a limitation and usually package holidays can last for a week 15 days they are not very long 
in that also they try to cover you know a lot of things so some people are not happy because they don't give enough time in certain locations okay or the other group of people can be happy at the same time they are covering a lot of things so we have to go with the group here <clears throat> then accommodation customers choose a hotel or other accommodation such as a villa at their chosen destination arrival and departure dates match the dates of a chosen flight so basically this flights owner we own certain flights but there may be a lot of scenarios where we are dealing with other airlines because we cannot own a lot of airlines there should be certain limitations and we cannot have a dedicated airline also for our tourist so these also become our owners of, or basically airline companies are a stakeholders then owners of these hotels become our stakeholders we are having having hotels but again that would be limited only later on we'll come to risk just like stakeholder analysis as i told you we'll have a 15 20 stakeholder list we'll also make risk we'll try to list at least 40 to 45 risk okay uh, what our stakeholders can face and how we can manage them basically what we can face not stakeholders because if they face it can be reputational risk for us or loss of business for us in that way <clears throat> okay then transfers customers are met on arrival at the destination airport a coach or taxi takes them to their luggage and their luggage to their hotel they are collected and returned to the airport for their flight home at the end of their holidays like it's uh, self explanatory but transfers also remains a very important part that's a biggest hassle for a lot of people when they go into the new country and this transfers doesn't mean only from hotel to airport it can also between you know when they are traveling within the city or when they are traveling outside the city to do a day tour with them <clears throat> do you think they have miss any of the important element here any of you have actually traveled with the package holidays no no okay <clears throat> is there any other element you think they have missed i mean the major ones are covered then sometimes they have guides sometimes they have individual cars also they arrange um okay. i think we're missing so we have accommodation transfer and flight but we're missing activities we're missing uh meals and there might be other stuff like travel insurance all right then do they have guide to help them for shopping and you know yeah. tourist guide type of thing yeah basically all of this small small thing can add a lot of value you can make this point and please mention that in your answers also Hmm. just giving a good hotel like a taj hotel or any big five star hotel is not enough but how to utilize the most of that place will also help it's always good to ha have a guide so under happy well whichever customer is traveling they should get a expert guide who will guide them you know what is best in the shopping what things you can visit and all of that because in the short time they cannot have enough time to understand the things and also it can be a part of risk management as well do's and don'ts basically even if you see this do's and don'ts are given by uh, certain countries when you travel there what is good there just depending on the culture yeah. what is good in one culture can be uh, taken opposite in a different culture okay <clears throat> so these things are not to uh, understand i mean learn is just for understanding and most of these are very logical in fact i would say this is one of the easiest pre scene reason being it's very logical yeah. if they ask you anything and you are little confused you can just use your logic and it will mostly end up being correct only because we see this directly or indirectly every time <clears throat> okay 
package holidays can be booked online or in person by seeking advice from the staff at a local travel agency so nowadays things are moved online most of them so we need a very uh, strong online presence we need a very good application application should be obviously secured from threats cyber security threats okay cyber threats we can say then uh, we can use the data to understand what actually people do okay we can have a lot of customers data later on they'll mention uh, how many years we are operating we can use our previous data compared to now how the trends are changing for the people okay then when we are doing acquisitions or merger in this industry i believe data can also be one of the reason why companies can acquire other companies let's say a international company like happy well is planning to go into the new market they can acquire a local tourism company so they'll have a lot of data and a lot of resources ready for them to get started soon because if we go organically from the scratch it will take a lot of time then one more thing comes in is, is where we are keeping data do we have uh, are we moving it to cloud or are we doing it in house okay that thing is also important then we'll see at the board level do we have somebody who is dedicated for it as it director or cio that is also very important nowadays in companies okay all right then or in person by seeking advice from the staff to a local travel agency though we have moved online but still we need to have some offices because a lot of people will gain trust when they meet in person okay we can focus on online but we can have some of the offices as well and where to locate office strategically maybe in the airport itself or maybe in a tourist place so that need to be done very strategically <clears throat> and also we need to understand what kind of packages we are selling like we have seen in e2 e pillar actually we can uh, we'll see it in again there are different kind of product cost leader and differentiator cost leader focus on cheap products cheap as in not in quality but in pricing less price like most of the chinese products whereas differentiator focus on little bit of luxury products so based on that also we can classify where to have our uh, office for agency what kind of marketing we are doing what kind of clients we are targeting all of this remains very very important there is one uh, quotation in marketing uh, very famous you guys might have heard half of the money in the marketing goes for waste but the problem is we don't know which half so basically 50% of the money is wasted because we are not targeting but companies struggle to understand which 50% so with the help of data with the help of other companies we can at least try to reduce our marketing expenses by increasing the effectiveness okay because marketing will play a very very important role here because this business is more of marketing isn't it marketing plus reviews first marketing that is i should know about the company okay then reviews what reviews the customers are putting in third is the pricing what is your pricing compared to the competitors and obviously what you are giving in return of that these are the three important things i believe is there anything what can be the fourth thing think as a customer first because they are the most important stakeholder what you will look in a travel package company travel company i think the timing as well right um i think that needs to be right if i want to go on a certain date the package has to be available on those dates so timing. the time yeah timing is also timing is uh, very important yes how many days and again your data can also help some people want to go for a longer one some want to just go for a 5 to 7 days 5 nights 7 nights whatever they are planning usually if you see uh, in the market they have standardized uh, days only like some will say five nights then seven then nine or sometimes they'll do best book that we can there is another thing uh, we need to focus on is a loyalty card loyalty card or subscription thing 
subscription model is very common nowadays across industry so what will do it will lock the customers customer will be demotivated to go into another company firstly they will be charged for the subscription fees secondly they will be getting a lot of perks just because of subscription maybe 10% extra off or some other kind of deals from the company loyalty card can be a good option <coughs> And even we can tie up with the corporates. We'll discuss all these options also later. Okay. It is possible to book a holiday by buying the separate element of travel and accommodation separately, but package holidays are usually more convenient. Customers can choose the packages that suit their dates and preferred destinations, knowing that accommodation is available to match the dates of their flights. So some people can do it separately, also. We already discussed that nothing to elaborate in that package holidays can be cheaper than the total cost of making separate bookings can be okay sometimes it can be expensive sometimes it can be cheaper as well <clears throat> and obviously we are not considering which time of the year the customer is traveling okay and in this also if it is booked very early just like flights the flight ticket goes down so definitely it will affect the prices Tour operators may own and operate their own aircraft and hotels. So we are the best example here. We own our aircraft also and hotels also. So obviously for us, it will be easier to give good pricing because we have all the margins and everything controlled within us. Or they may make book bookings on flights and hotel rooms from third party airlines and hotel chains. The associated cost saving can be used to discount the selling price of their package holidays <clears throat> so that's very simple to understand then package holiday tour operates offer advice and assistance operators offer advice and assistance that may not be available from holidays that have been booked independently so this thing we are talking about <clears throat> a guide kind of thing advice on basically everything from what things to carry how will be the culture to the climate and what is the best places to visit to shop and everything even we can do this online or we can have a team doing this we can use bots in the start then we can have assistance of people calling in i mean people calling can be even better we have to see the cost part of it because when we talk actually to the person, that experience is totally different. And reviews will play a very, very important role in this business. <clears throat> because most of the people travel, you know, like let's say once in three years, four years, it's very rare. They'll go every year. Okay. And obviously, they don't want to take the risk. <clears throat> I'm talking about international, they can travel within. Obviously, it also depends in which country they are, what is the living standards and everything. Most tour operators have representative or reps based in the holiday resorts that they serve. So training of the reps. So when there is a reps, you know, there is one risk in this business. There is a lot of fraud happening with the representative. They misguide the customer, sometimes even stealing. You must have been heard of a lot of cases like that. So there might be a question coming in that we have issues now how to manage that how to train them, what internal controls we can put in, how we can use technology for that, what background check we can do before hiring them. <clears throat> Reps can provide customers with support and advice throughout their holidays. This can include dealing with any concern or complaints that might otherwise spoil a holiday. Recommending local attractions and assisting in the event of problems such as illness or lost passports. So again, we need to have tie up with the hospitals or at least contact with the hospital. Some expert knowledge related to passport as well, you know, to the MSC and how things will work, how many days it will take for the new passport and what is the immigration laws and everything. Because we have to assume that the travel is a layman, they don't understand anything. In fact, they are not interested in doing all of this. 
so there is some specific and explicit knowledge also required by our representative which can also be changing with the time so we need to update it in fact we can have one section in our website or application where people can go and report on this we can have some to do list for that okay i'm i'm just giving an very logical what do you think should be an option for that event of problem firstly uh, let's discuss what can be event of problems and how we can uh, deal with it you guys can give your own recommendations hello yes sir <clears throat> what kind of problems can happen in traveling mm. loss of illness goods is, yeah loss of goods true illness also definitely but uh, what about the travel insurance normally they combine it with the flights right yes and yes, also recommendations uh, to the hospitals or clinics which are near to the accommodations and... so we'll go one by one first talk about the problem then what is the solution for that so first we are talking about let's say loss of goods okay what's the solution for that cg I'm asking you. Um, hello, I mean me. Okay. Um, you think a locker facility? Locker facility. If should be there usually in hotels. Yeah, uh, it should be there, and like you talk about, first thing is insurance. Yeah. Travel insurance, you mean? Yeah, travel insurance usually includes even if you're booking flight, you must have seen an advertisement. Yeah. Mm. Not loss of your bags, I mean goods, loss of your passport. You can do the insurance. So they will cover certain amount of cost for that. So obviously, we need to find the best insurance company or we need to tie up with the insurance company to get the best deal for our customers. In fact, in cert certain cases. Big big companies have made their own insurance companies because insurance company work on very high margin, and if we are confident, we'll get insurance with everyone, and we have like hundreds and thousands of customers. We can even think of that. That can be a different option going forward. So when we are making stakeholder list, insurance companies also, please write it down. Okay, next. Benny, are you there? Yeah, Hello, Benny. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. Please, please add something. This uh, bad weather condition <clears throat> or. Uh, or uh, so bad weather condition will lead to what? So if you have planned for a trip or uh, for a destination and uh, due to bad weather, uh, that uh, you, they couldn't visit that place on that day. So what we will do? Yeah, very good example. Because if we promise something and because of weather we can't do, so definitely they can complain and they'll say we'll sue you. We have not, we have not given what promise. So it should be. Uh, mention in the disclaimer or you know when we are doing the contract or billings it should be mentioned it should be very properly designed because if things are uncontrollable or especially due to natural calamities we cannot do anything at the same yes. time we can increase their stay if it is for one week means one week if it is snowing if it is raining heavily we cannot do anything yeah yeah that's a very important part of it I don't know if it is uh, or if it can be covered in insurance part. The insurance should pay a little because they are not utilized. It's very rare. Ah, uh, yeah. What 
what else can be in the event or what else is the event of problem so there can be visa and immigration issues um a lot of times when we want to play when we want to go on a holiday to a certain place we want to apply for a visa um so there might be a possibility that we might not get the visa on time and for that we might need to cancel or change our travel uh, package i think another one i can think of is um It's a culture difference. Um, so when we want to go to a place of a completely, uh, so there might be a language barrier. For example, if you want to go to Europe where they don't really um, speak English, so there might be a language barrier. So I think for that, we, it's, it's, it's helpful to have a travel guide so that he can explain and guide us in the in the holiday very good so two important points first is visa so again you know there are a lot of uh, risk involved in this business when we are promising the customer so again visa thing sometimes visa will take more time so it's uncomfortable for us to do that so we can again mention that if visa thing takes forward you have to change the dates Obviously, we cannot say that you lost the money or something. Then visa, and obviously, we should have enough idea to understand normally how many days it takes, and we can have some free time as well for that. And secondly, what you talk about culture? So nowadays, machines are also coming for translation, but it's very rare people use it. However, we can have some section in our application where people can use translators if they put something in English and whatever languages or whichever languages let's say happy well is uh, doing our business is doing they can just translate it so it can give some at least some idea to them at the same time we should have a tour guide and all of these things mentioned before so there can there, be so many there might also be issues of um, overcrowding um for example if there are a lot of people going on the same package um so that will be overcrowding right because we won't really get to sort of have a focused travel guide um and the other one is hidden cost so i think it's really important for everyone to read their yes so two important points. Yep. Right. so when you say overcrowding overcrowding as in like somebody went through us Let's say 100 people from us went to that place. Then we have 10 other companies. They are also bringing in 100, 100 people. Like that overcrowding you are saying, overcrowding of a tourist place or something? Yeah, but also a lot of times the travel companies, they also tend to overbook their holidays. So, um, you know, last, for example, if the limit is 100, and they've booked 110. So those 10 people at the last moment would need to back out. Um, so there might be a risk of overbooking and overcrowding in, in that sense. OK. Not other way, but this and that, that both are true. Yeah. Yep. They do it overbooking because they assume a lot of people will cancel or other problems will happen. Yep. Okay, and the next was the hidden cost. Firstly, I think we should be very careful with what else can be the hidden cost for us. Okay, when we are promising certain things, as simple as food, if we are serving. So, what kind of food we'll be serving, and what it includes. If there is something extra, the customer has to pay for it. All these mentions are very, very important. If we don't mention and people are assuming it. In fact, if you mention also, and that is a common practice by other companies, and if you don't provide, that can also be a reputational risk. Because when people are traveling, usually they want a good food. Because that will affect their moods directly. So we also, also need to I think that. That this, you know, like if you want to visit a particular place and you, if you want to go inside that place and all, 
you know they charge the entry fee and stuff like museums yeah yeah the entry fee and these things right so again this thing need to be clear most of this uh, most of the time the customer they have to pay it individual what we are promising we can do it and whatever extra is there we can say you have to do it at the same time we can help them all this this museums are there or this places are there this will be ticket this is the website you can go and buy the tickets and this is the pricing this is the timing so we can have lot of details on our application for this that will help them as a guide we'll have a guide also plus obviously the application should serve it okay okay moving forward package holidays also offer financial safeguards that are not available on other types of booking let's see what they are talking about westlandian law requires package holidays operators to be registered with the westlandian travel operator license scheme so this stakeholder becomes very powerful for us you know when we do stakeholder analysis power and interest right 2 by 2 so this license scheme or this government body will become a key stakeholders because they'll have high power at the same time they'll have higher interest especially companies like us which are listed we must be one of the biggest in westland <laughs> how we operate how we deal all of this will be very important so tour operators must make a payment in respect of each package holidays that they sell into a fund that is administered by wtol okay the fund is used to refund customers if their tour operator goes out of business before they travel that's a very good thing actually for the benefit of the customer if the companies go bankrupt or is there any problem because we'll be motivating customers to advance book let's say 3 months 5 months or even 6 months or more because that will help us to uh, book our flight tickets which can be a little bit cheaper for advance booking the fund is also used by wtol to organize flights to repatriate customers who are stranded overseas if their tour operator goes out of business during their holidays go out of business or they don't have money to book any of the issue so that's a a very good risk management by the government at the same time for us it will be a very costly affair because it's very rare that companies go out of business the tour operator must make a payment in respect of each package holiday that they sell into the fund so that's an extra cost for us so now we have to find out very cleverly what kind of insurance uh, we are doing or what kind of insurance we are providing to the customers because in the start they have mentioned we sell insurance also but if the government is doing why they will buy the insurance <clears throat> and what this insurance include by the government and what other insurance uh, companies are providing like here they have mentioned sell third party products such as insurance <coughs> all right but i believe this should be mostly from the bigger issues not for the loss of passport baggages and all of this but mention this also under the stakeholder list now we'll go to tour operators versus travel agents how they are different tour operators are entities that combine the separate element of a holiday into a package that can be sold directly to a customer or can be sold through a travel agent we must be having travel agents as well tour operators may provide the elements directly through ownership and operations operation of for example hotels and aircrafts or they may purchase those element from third parties usually companies like us who have their own aircraft and hotel definitely we can make a better deal we have better uh, risk management because we are controlling things directly what if we do a contract with certain companies and that contract didn't work out that can also be a problem 
Travel agents are organizations that sell holidays and other travel products such as airline tickets and hotel bookings to customer. They're specific to things. And most of the time they don't have any of this as a ownership. They are just uh, being the face of the hotels and these companies. Traditionally, travel agencies were retail shops where customers could seek advice from agency staff because they have knowledge, let's say for visa, for uh, culture issue so they'll give an idea and confidence and it will be a local person so it will give them a trust as well maybe they are representing international companies but they can have a local place in fact this can be strategy for us if you are if you are going in a new country now from westland we are going into eastland southland any new country we can have a travel agents there such agencies still exist but many travel agencies offer online services that enable customers to select and book holidays through travel agency website. Nowadays, most of this thing have moved to online business. We have a lot of uh, companies which you cannot see their physical presence anywhere. Only online, they're spending a lot of money for branding and they're generating good amount of profit. In fact, in this industry, you no know, hotel, airlines, we need intermediaries okay because suppose there are four companies okay and we are the one giving the cheapest so how we can sell to our customer and tell them we are the cheapest so maybe we are only inventing a company who will just be an intermediary to put all the companies and compare the rates then only our business will grow at the same time the company which is selling uh, the highest maybe the same service but at a higher cost they won't be interested to have an intermediary. They will eliminate the intermediary. Why? Because it will show them as the most expensive. They will be expensive and assume that, I mean, look to the people that we are just average pricing. So it depends. It can help certain businesses or it cannot. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Some tour operators sell exclusively to customers, either online or through a combination of online physical shops. Other tour operators permit travel agents to sell their holidays package in a return for a commission. Second one is usually a good deal and very common work on a commission basis because they already have a brand. These people have just to go and do the sales. Most of these are logical, so no need to remember it. We are just trying to see what can be the opportunity here or what can be a threat or maybe a problem for us in our operation. Okay. Because risk management is also a part of us. If you see P2, when we'll go through, we have two chapters focusing on risk management. Though at strategic level, we have an entire P3 focusing on risk management. P2 also have, after budgeting, some aspect of risk. Because risk management is the responsibility of everybody in the organization. And we go when we go through this, we have to find what can be the risk. Not only risk in our operations or way of working, what can be kind of threat, which can be a business risk in the future. Or why certain businesses are doing more sales than us. Maybe they have a lot of travel agents working with them. They are the operators, but still they have a good amount of travel agents. So they are pushing their product and services from both the places. Or certain companies can even think of will work under happy well name for uh, packages and when it comes to individual will give the same hotels but under the different name just to look a different brand that is also possible or they can come up with different branding where they are selling very expensive like villas and everything expensive bus uh, business people they are focusing or corporate clients even some businesses go for meetings also it's not only for travel always they can go for uh, work meetings or anything <clears throat> many tour operators and travel agencies prefer customers to book online because it is cheaper to process online bookings than to operate shops so a lot of fixed costs will be reduced for the business so this is obvious for the businesses to push this is across industries Online sales are generally based on interactive websites that enable customers to input variable such as their preferred local airports for departure. 
or many times people are not living in big city let's say they are not staying in london and we have flights flights from london and somebody is staying in you know smaller town in this place let's say they are in blackburn or bolton so they need to take a flight from there to the airport so that will be extra charge or if they want they can come through their own vehicle or they can book on their own offline sales rely on interaction with a trained travel advisor to guide the customer through the same issues so we need advisors we already mentioned this point training is important part of our business training is not only about the you know the details or the specific knowledge but also how they uh, deal with the customers with the advisor offering recommendations based on customers preferences this requires the provision of retail premises and staff salaries i hope these points are uh, clear is there anything uh, we need to highlight here any other point you can think of it's very logical what we see in our day to day lives if you go to city center if you go to the market you can see it i think and especially cg you are from dubai so for you you must have seen lot of companies like this they are operating yeah a lot in fact you know we can add countries like dubai and their government also stakeholder because they work very closely with this travel companies for example they have two options either to go to dubai or yeah connect uh, flights dubai yes, abu dhabi so they will choose dubai because they have better connecting flights in fact the government is also giving them uh, certain supports to these companies if there are two options which are similar but let's say dubai is cheaper so people can still travel there and after going they spend lot of money which can add up to the economy of the country in fact dubai is getting money mostly from the tourism only then their uh, next step obviously it's uh, government things but depend on visas are they allowing visit visa how much time it is taking what is the acceptance rate all of this all right okay <clears throat> now we have package holiday sales by sales channel percentage of online versus offline so we are in 2023 actually they will assume that this is by the end of 2022 because in the end of 2022 only we'll have all the details and financials also okay so 23 it will show as forecast i'm just going to numbers to show you because they will do at end of the year okay so 23 they are putting as forecast so what's happening now we can just assume it is closer to that maybe there is a small difference so this data is important to remember yes it is important because this we can show as a justification for certain changes in business models what we are doing for example simply we can just say what is what are this blue blue line so the column has blue and this orange kind of thing okay blue is definitely going up that means what online is going up so we have to reduce our physical presence or at least we don't need to invest much in the physical presence just maintain it is it good for the businesses yes why because maintaining online is cheaper for them we just need to spend more money or more resources rather to make our application our website more user friendly would this make mean it, that we need to allocate more on opex as compared to capex operating expenses yes we can say that or we can say we don't need to spend more on capex 
capex can be other things also if you are you know planning to uh, bring in more of our flights or hotels that is also possible this is directly for the sales and most difficult part of any business is sales where the sales are coming from the uh, specifically percentage difficult it start from 50 now it's almost close to i mean it can go to 70 if you talk about 23 it is 60 so 10% increase that's a very good increase in the matter of few years it can even uh, go up because now people are moving everything into online only so internet penetration availability of uh, devices a lot of other things will also repeat let's say same business we started in a country where internet is expensive when people don't have access to smartphones or they are not comfortable with smartphones so definitely we need to have more of offline shops compared to online so this also has to do with the economic situation the demography the culture and everything however westland being a developed country we assume all of this is easily available so this is ideal that we are expecting close to 65 70% of sales coming from there this is a common trend nowadays across industries now even if you see groceries and all a good amount of percentage is shifting towards online slowly <clears throat> okay now we'll move to package holiday destination <clears throat> actually if we do too much also it's not uh, good today only prashant will do some one or two paragraphs okay and we'll try to discuss or link it to the other scenarios package holiday destinations the most popular type of package holidays sold in westland is so called sun sea is called sun sea and sand sun sea and sand so we can assume from this maybe the country is little bit cold people don't see sun often okay so they want to go a place where they have good sun just like in the uk however in the last few years i think it was very warm it went up to 40 or the certain places but usually people uh, talk about the climate there and they are very happy to see sun out there again it's related to the culture culture and the climatical condition also Westland has a temperature climate that is cold for much of the year and has mild summers. <clears throat> so where people will choose, they will choose to the hot place only. And if you go into a country where it is hot, they want to come to a colder country. They want to come to Westland. Many customers for package holidays wish to travel to destination that offer hot weather and sunny skies. Most customers for three years. What is three years? Sun, sea, and sand. holidays are looking for an opportunity to relax on the beach during the day and to enjoy restaurants and other activities to their hotels or in their resorts in the evening right so what we can do now when we are making the list we have let's say five countries or five uh, locations where we can take the customer so we have to put all the variables together let's say one variable is visa second is i mean the most important is cost what is the cost difference then we can talk about the visa then we talk about the food then we talk about the culture based on that we can list and obviously our margin also comes in place and uh, currency fluctuations i believe we must be having good amount of uh, forex okay and we need to and we must be managing the currency risk as well so based on that we can push certain places which is beneficial for as where it is win win for us and the customers <clears throat> or we can add let's say there are five options across other computers also so we can add six seven two three more options in that <clears> three <throat> s holidays vary significantly depending on the destination and choice of accommodation on the destination and choice choice of accommodation. some people want a very luxury stay some people are okay they want to explore more on the out skirts depend for example customers booking family holidays generally choose holiday resorts 
and accommodation that are child friendly they seek places where children can swim safely and that offer activities and attractions to assume them proximity to theme park is also a consideration where as if you compare to others they will be different adults traveling without children often book child free holidays in a quieter locations where they can relax some hotels set a minimum age for example 18 years for guest so that they can guarantee an adult only environment that's also an option in fact we can have a third category where we are focusing only corporates you know business people coming in because a lot of things they have they can have meetings in the morning then outings in the evening okay they do a team building exercise that kind of package also we can add other factors affecting the choice prevailing weather customers have a different preference for heat and sunshine some customers prefer to avoid extreme heat others are keen to enjoy sunshine during westlands winter months so in winter months only mostly this thing will go up or maybe in the summer time in westland they want to go a different place so we discussed this point already according to the weather the climate these things need to be taken care of so the demand will change according to the whether we need to have relationship with the other stakeholders in the business and obviously we are operating from so many years so we'll have some data also to back it up obviously if we book push for advanced booking we can have a quick cash inflow and that can be used for working capital and other business operations second is cost local economies can affect the cost of accommodation and transfers some location charge more for a higher quality holiday experience distance can affect the cost of flights obviously customers generally have budgets for their cost of their holiday so one thing we have to do is we need to be very ethical okay when we are talking about the cost our cost and what is the average expenses people are doing that and that too should be on data we should not assume they can survive 100 dollars daily there if they are going there they want to eat good they want to explore and there must be a lot of hidden costs what we uh, discuss hidden cost for us also and what people need all right <clears throat> that thing also need to be taken care attractions resorts vary in terms of the things that are available to do and see some customers may be keen to enjoy sports and adventure activities while others may be keen to visit historical sites again these different kind of things it's very rare that in one location itself they'll get sports adventure and historical site both if you got it's a win win otherwise we can again subdivide or if they are going in one country together we can subdivide the group a and b like that so when we talk about transfers it can be helpful in that way next is travel time some customers dislike long flights while others may be willing to travel further to reach their preferred destination long flights especially you know let's say somebody is coming from <coughs> australia to let's say they want to go in south america do you know how long it will be and imagine they have a long long haul in between let's say in heathrow airport in uk they have to wait for 10 hours so a lot of people will not be happy with that I'm talking about this a very big tour even if it is a smaller 10 hour journey or 8 hour journey a lot of times just to save the cost they can have 4 hours 5 hours or even up to 12 hours waiting time during the transfers that can put customers uh, into a bad mood okay at the same time if you choose that flight it will be little bit cheaper so we have to find a middle ground where the flight is not very expensive at the same time the wait time is not that much or even if the wait time is there minimum wait time should be there and even it should be at a very good airport maybe people will be happy to have a transit through dubai airport compared to let's say other middle eastern countries are you getting the point yeah i was going to tell you <laughs> it's very easy they can even go out i guess like if it is for longer hours they can 
yes. come out, not there come there is certain the ways of uh, yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. I think even in Heathrow also they allow so certain airports allow that. In fact, uh, two years, uh, not two years, one and a half year before we did a did a case study on airport management company. So what we found out is airports which have more transit flight, you know this uh, break the breaking flights. They are making more money than direct flights. Why? Because if the customer is spending time there, they'll eat something, they will buy something, they will shop, a lot of other things will happen. Whereas if there is only entrance and exit, they won't make much money because their primary source of income is the hotels and other shops at the airports. And if people are not spending time and obviously they will not buy much. And therefore Dubai airport is very strategically placed also Dubai and Heathrow airport in the UK. They're very strategically placed. If people want to go for a long journey, these are the two stop points usually they will look for <laughs> it has geographical advantage also yeah but now in the future now Qatar have also made a very good airport Saudi is also coming up so maybe Dubai have competitions now <laughs> travel time we have discussed culture some customers prefer resort that offer food and entertainment that are similar to those at home. Food and entertainment, first food choices, what they want, okay, should be same. Or at least they want some standard products. Let's say KFC is there, McDonald's is there. So it's almost similar if you go in other countries. Though taste differs, but still you have, you know, okay, I'm used to it, like that. And they are not experimenting with the food. A lot of people are very picky with the food if they don't get what they usually eat it can be a problem for them and second is entertainment entertainment can be they want their same sports channel what they usually watch or nowadays i think entertainment should not be a problem because of the internet okay i'm talking about online entertainment while other prefer to experience local traditions They have given few, you know, we can add so many more. Can you just, uh, all three of you can add one, one point here. What other factors do you think people will consider? Okay, just think of yourself. If you are traveling, what you will consider? Other than this five points. I mean, in the hotels, if they give, act, I mean, if they provide something like the local um, you know, their traditional food and stuff. It's more preferred. Mm -hmm. And even the, like, if they come to Kerala, you know, that we sometimes offer for the people the, I mean, the tra traditional dance and everything. So something similar to that, if they provide, not all kind of uh, customers, but still many would prefer to experience it when they come to that country. Right. For example, people traveling to Africa, they are more inclined towards watching the <laughs> wild animals and everything. Yeah. Going to yeah. yeah. <laughs> what else? <clears throat> I think when we talk about travel time, it's not only the flight. But even when we are doing transfers, when we have bus, when we have car, uh, they should have a itinerary, the pickup, drop, and everything should be according to the time. Otherwise, let's say they say pickup is in the 6 a.m. in the morning and they're coming at 10. So it will obviously change the entire timetable of that uh, plane. And it can make them a bad experience. Time management also plays a very important role. And other ways I have seen in the packages, what they do, especially in India, in this section, uh, they try to cover a lot of things in a very small time. Okay. So sometimes they allow you to just stay there for 15 minutes, 30 minutes, whereas you might need four or five hours or entire day to explore that. Let's say if you're going to Taj Mahal, they'll say, okay, in one hour, you just have a look around. It's very difficult to finish that in one hour. 
you need to you know sit there it's especially for international travelers they need to you know have this one time experience even local people rarely travels there they just go once or twice in their lifetime so they need good time rather than just rushing and advertising you know we have covered so many things i mean look at the time it's like how did you cover so many things in 3 days or 5 days that can also and this can be related to the point they have mentioned here the historical sites or other sites so they need a good time what we can do is uh, we can give them options we are covering let's say four things today but if you are okay you can just do two you can just do one we will pick you up you know some uh, though it's a group thing but still we should have some flexibility in that 